One thing that I'm a huge fan of doing is getting this big guy out. I don't really have a name for him because he's for sale and I don't want to get too attached. But I absolutely love getting him out whenever I'm at work. He loves to wrap himself around me a little bit. Himself around me. I'm trying to keep him uh, supported while I record. Um, but this is something um, that is called animal therapy. Now, animal therapy is actually very good for both the animal and the person. Um, the, what the animal gets is it gets socialized and it gets some love and love and care and we do that both here at standout and at a lot of love um for when we need to sell the animal and the animal social and so we should the animal socialize um but it's also good for the person because people who um enjoy animals so more than likely enjoy holding them and um i really enjoy holding this guy um it's also kind of funny because most people are into like big snakes like this and I had a guy in here earlier, and I was just like, oh. He was like, this is one of the biggest snakes he's ever seen. So I said, oh, this guy? I just picked him up. Because uh, I absolutely love dealing with uh, with big snakes like this. And um, it, it's one of my favorite animals to to hold and, and get out. And obviously, he's kind of wrapped around me right now. So, um, yeah, today's been a, a big animal, like, in terms of size animal, big animal day. Good morning, reptile friends. How are you today? I'm back um, from a little hiatus, and um, we're here to film some really cool stuff going on in the reptile room right now. Um, as some of you may have seen on Facebook, I am having some issues with my kidney, and it's made me pretty sick, so I haven't been doing a whole lot lately. Um, felt good enough today to try and record some stuff for you guys, get some content out there. But um, I'm going to try and keep up with the every week. But, you know, if I miss a week here and there, um, I've got to wait on surgery. And I don't even get to see the surgeon right now until June 26th. So, um, yeah, just bear with me. Like I said, we'll try and still get at least one video out a week for you guys. So, lots of big changes, lots of big things. Um, unfortunately, our female... Um, Egyptian Euromastix passed away on us. Um, not really sure what happened. She was a hatchling. Things happen. Um, so we did get a new one. It's a bigger juvenile, so definitely not full grown yet. We named him Cairo, and we've got him in the reptile room now. And then, um, let's see, we have king snake eggs incubating. We have a gravid leopard gecko. And we have a gravid beardy. So we'll check some of those things out. Okay guys, so next up, <laughs> um, I didn't realize that Anne was gonna lay that quickly. I thought that I still had another few weeks to start looking for eggs. And I opened her up to feed her and we had eggs. I found them on 5-9, but there's like a period of three days at which they could have been laid. So I had, I believe seven eggs. Uh oh, yep, we lost them. Um... Okay. Well, it looks like I'm only gonna have two viable eggs out of this clutch. As you can see, these guys looked good the other day, but now, not so much. But those two look good. Hopefully we'll get two steaks out of them. I do have the hog noses in today, trying to lock, and I am Hopefully gonna get one more clutch out of them. Gosh darn it, that's frustrating. But these two look great, so we're gonna incubate those out and hopefully get at least two baby snakes this year. I've got this guy out at work today, um, just to get him to stretch his legs out a little bit. And um, something, I couldn't get it on video because I don't have anybody here to help me really uh, help record. But something about these guys is that, um, they absolutely like when you first pick them up they might do a bit of the tail thrashing so what you want to be able that you can make sure and do i'm going to just kind of you know we're going to chill he's got a very long tongue so when you first pick them up you want to make sure you grab them right about here at the base of the tail obviously it's because I, you know, I touched him he's going to be a little he's going to move around a bit but when you pick him up uh you gotta now to have one of these and really socializing, you gotta have a certain level of strength because he's gonna twist around a lot 
And if he gets super active and starts running around all over the place, I'll do that. He'll swing himself around a lot, but eventually, once he starts to slow down, what you'll want to do is you'll want to pick him up kind of from the underbelly here. And he should chill out um, pretty nicely and just make sure you keep a good hold of the base of the tail right about here to make sure that um, you don't lose him and you give him enough support. Because if you grab him down uh, by kind of the middle of the end of the tail, that could hurt him. So you want to make sure that you get him in the right spot. And um, that's how you would socialize them. Also make sure you trim their nails quite often because those can get pretty sharp pretty quickly. All right, friends, we got a red foreman update for you. See how beautiful he is. He's got his little dewlap out and he's pretending that I'm not looking at him. So red foreman came to us a couple weeks ago as a surrender to the rescue and he has been living happily in his new enclosure. Um, this enclosure is under construction. Don't mind my reflection in the back, but it's pretty big. It's tall, almost goes floor to ceiling in here. And um, we're planning on making use of all this upper space that you uh, see is empty with that driftwood we've got stacked in there in the interim. Um, he's doing awesome for us though. We found out he really likes strawberries. Even though that's only a treat food, um, yeah, you got to feed him whatever you want him to eat before the strawberries come out. Um, he will take a finger for strawberries. He's intermittently eating his greens, noms fruit like nobody's business, and uh, yeah, I mean, he's been pretty cool so far. All right, so I'm going to kind of give you a bit more of a, vis of a visual demonstration of how to hold one of these guys. I'm going to go ahead and pick this one up now because he's starting to move around. And as you can see, I've got him by the base of the tail and by the torso. Now, here in a second, because I picked him up, he'll probably start to get a little wound up. So what I'll do is I'll hold him by the base of the tail and ow. He's, he's going to thrust around in circles for a minute and kind of try and tangle his body around, try and get free. And I'm going to wait for him to calm down a little bit um, to make sure that he's okay for me to hold, making sure I keep a very firm grip on the base of that tail, and then eventually, he's good to go. Say hi, buddy. <laughs> he's awesome, I love this guy, he's great. All right, over here we have our new Egyptian beardy. He's a big boy, he just got fresh greens. Um, I'm gonna put some more rocks in his enclosure, I think, just because they do live on rocky soil. He literally is a tank and destroys every plant I put in there. Not like to a point where it can't be repaired, but he just plows through everything. You can see the toppled over plants. But um, he's pretty big. He's probably about 10, 12 inches. He's chonky, eating great. Everything looks good on his end. So um, yeah, we're doing, doing a good job with him and he's been healthy and happy and doing great.